Hello, I'm Gordon Henderson and I'm going to show you how to make one of my raspberry ladder boards. Here's the board, printed circuit board. Nice and easy. It's got some layout, some, some uh, writing on it to tell you where things go. Before we start to make it, we'll just have a look at the tools we need. First thing we need, a pair of cutters. Cut the wires. Second thing we need, which is more important, soldering iron. This is my soldering iron. It's a 45 watt temperature controlled well of soldering iron. It's quite old, but a good soldering iron will last a long time. Final thing, solder. This again is some quite old solder. I've had this for a long time. It's multi-core solder. It's quite fine and I find it really useful to use and easy to get on with. That's the tools. Here's the board. Here's the uh, kit of components from Tandy. Two different types of resistors, switches, small LEDs, red, yellow, green, blue LEDs, the little connector, and finally, a little bit of ribbon cable that's going to connect us up to the Raspberry Pi. One last thing I'll just mention, um, when you're soldering, you need uh, three hands, really. One hand to hold the soldering iron, one hand to hold the solder, and another hand to hold the board in place. I use this stuff, Blue Magic. A lot of people don't, don't like it. Some people like to use something like this, uh, a third hand with a little magnifier. I do use a magnifier because it helps. But I'm going to use this stuff, a little bit of Blue Magic. So, let's now have a look at um, getting started. Okay, here we are. Um, we've got our board. Quick inspection of the board, make sure there's no obvious scratches, nothing that just looks like it shouldn't be there. It will be very difficult for you to check the board unless you uh, take a multimeter and check each thing individually. That's hard work. I think for now it's just safe to assume that if the board looks like it's uh, undamaged, it's going to be fine. First thing we're going to look at is these four 1000 ohm resistors. Uh, these go with each of the four switches. The kit from Tandy comes in the order that I recommend you assemble it, so what I'd recommend you do is don't take everything out of the kit and leave it in a big pile, but just take them out of the kit one at a time um, and uh, solder them on the board in the order that they're packaged in the kit, because that should make it nice and easy for you. So let's take these resistors out of the little paper packing. Now resistors, it doesn't matter which way around they go, obviously. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bend the leads over one at a time. The spacing on the board is more or less the same spacing that you'll get if you just bend the resistors over. Now even though the resistors can go in either way around, I'm going to place them in. I'm going to place them all the same way, just because it looks nicer. Brown, black, red, gold, you might not be able to see it there, but brown, black, red is the uh, the resistor colour code for 1000 ohms. So there's our first resistor. Push it through, turn the board over, just bend the legs out slightly, and that, that'll generally hold it in place. Here's my little cheat, a little bit of blue magic on the back. Put it on the front and down, and it's in front of us. So, we're now ready to make our very first solder joint. Got my solder ready. My soldering iron, and you may have heard the, uh, the little bit of uh, noise there. That's um, cleaning the tip of the soldering iron on a, a little bit of uh, wet sponge. Make it nice and shiny. And here we're going to make, make our first solder joint. Soldering is not difficult. You just need a little bit of practice, a little bit of patience. And here we go. Soldering iron, you need to touch both the pad and the leg and you need to keep it there for a second or two and once you've done that you then just touch the solder the solder will flow and then take it away and that was easy the important thing is to keep it there let it heat up touch the solder and then take it away and the important thing really solder on the wire, it doesn't matter. The important thing really is to leave the soldering iron on the joint after you take the solder away. If you do that, the solder will then heat up, the joint itself will, will be made more secure, the solder will flow right through to the other side of the board, and there we go. 
the very first soldering joint. Soldering arm back. Take our cutters. Now, if you do this and push the cutters, you're going to lose that. You'll never find it again until you step on it. So always hold it as you clip it off. And there's our first solder joint. Quick look on the other side. Yep, that's okay. One resistor, soldered in place. Good. What I'll do now is I'll do the other three at the same time. Once again, there you go. Touch the soldering arm to both the lead and the pad. Give it a second or two. Touch your solder. The solder should just flow nicely. Leave it a second and then off. If you're a little bit concerned that you've applied too much heat, just leave it a second and let it cool down. What I'm doing here is I'm moving from one resistor to the other rather than do both sides at the same time. There you go. Touch. Let it warm up. A little bit of solder. Enough. Touch. A little bit of solder. Let it warm and then off. Great. And again, Keep hold of these wires, otherwise you'll stand on them and it'll hurt. There we are. Three more joints. I'm having a look at this. It, uh, they're fine. This this one could probably do with a tiny little bit more solder, but in reality, it's okay. There's no there's no big problem. So there there you go. There's our first four. Resistor soldered on without any fuss or bother. It's just a matter now of going through the rest of them. So, I've actually taken the other resistors out of the pack before. But I do recommend what you do is leave them in the pack until you're ready to do them. There's no rush whatsoever. You can take your time. And left in the pile. So, and again, if you're not confident or you're not um, happy about doing a lot at once, do them one at a time. Doesn't really matter, it just takes a little bit longer. But who cares? This is fun. Or it should be. Or it's exciting. Or it should be. I've been doing this for over 35 years. And I think it's fun and exciting. Rusty soldering iron. The soldering iron is, I've had it for about 35 years and I bought it second hand. It's really good and if you're, if you think you're going to get interested in it, then it's worthwhile buying a good quality soldering iron. This is a Weller soldering iron. The other ones which do seem quite popular and a lot of people use them are Antex. And Tex and Weather seem the sort of main main brands. And if you're getting a an Antex iron, I think the uh, entry level Antex irons are not temperature controlled. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to be good for soldering. It just means that you might have to. It might not heat up quite as fast as this because this is uh, 45 watts, and if they're 18 or 25 watts. They may just take a little bit longer, but there's no rush, no rush at all. And if the tip starts to get a little bit uh, gungy, then you, know, you just give it a wipe and a sponge. Some newer systems don't use sponges, they use a sort of, uh, what looks like a set of springs or a set of uh, wire or brass springs to, to wipe the, uh, the tip of the solar iron. Doesn't matter really. Oops. I'm just having to bend some of these wires out of the way to get into it. There. 
soldering iron on, a little touch of solder, leave it a second and off you go. Now it is important to try and apply the solder there we go, to the lead or to the pad and not the soldering iron. I've seen people applying solder to the soldering iron, which is great because you cover the end of the soldering iron with solder, but you don't actually get any solder on the component itself. If any of those, if you think they're a little bit, um, be, it just takes a second to, to go down again with the soldering iron, just remelt it and off you go. Does this one look like it's uh, probably okay? Once again, ping, ping. So let's uh, put these in. And again, because they're quite close, you may want to just do them one at a time. I'm just trying to save a little bit of time here and I'm going to, going to do them together. Again, if you want to be really, really, if you want it to look really good, try and get them to line up exactly. Because it's more impressive. Right. Right, here we are with the last two resistors. Make sure our solder's there. Solder iron on, a little bit of solder, and off we go. Solder iron, solder right down to the base, and off. There we are. So that's all the resistors in place. The next thing we've got to do is the four switches. So here's the four switches. Now these go on, they're slightly rectangular, so they're not square. So we should just be able to clip those in. Round. There we go. And the last one. There. Should stay in pretty much on, on their own. So so we, while we don't need the uh, blue tack to hold them in place, I'm going to use it just to hold the board in place so that the board doesn't slide when we try and solder it. Sixteen joints coming up. One, two, don't forget to leave the soldering iron on for just a second or two after you take the solder away. That just gives everything a chance. The flow and get itself sorted out. Go back down at the end again. Been a little bit um, ahead of myself there, putting the solder on before the joint is properly warmed up. Doesn't do any harm, but it doesn't help us either. So there we are, that looks fine. We can't really clip these off, um, they're a little bit sharp underneath, 
but uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I wouldn't do this on your dining room table. Four little buttons. Good. Next we come to the uh, the LEDs. Now the LEDs are a little bit more temperature sensitive than the um, than the resistors or switches are. So, but by now we've already soldered up all these resistors, all these switches. We should have a pretty um, good idea how to solder, especially if you've just started off. We'll start off with the blue LEDs. Here we are down at the bottom. Now, LEDs, well, resistors and switches. It doesn't matter which way around they go, but for the LEDs it does. And you'll notice here, there's a little flat on the uh, the, the, the white uh, picture there. On the LEDs as well, there's also a flat. Now, if you're not sure which way around the flat is, just have a look. The LEDs themselves also have a long leg. Now, the, the short leg is where the flat is. And in the electrical terms, the short short leg of the flat is negative, and the long leg is a positive. So we should just be able to push our LED in there, and then there we go. So two LEDs. I'm going to uh, I'm going to cheat here because I'm going to do them all at the same time. And again, do them one at a time. If you're not confident at all, do them one at a time. Just take your time. Get it right, make it pretty, and uh, and it'll be good. Flat again. Make sure you put these in the right way around. The big ones are quite easy to manage. The little ones, which we'll do in a minute, are a little bit trickier, but the same principle applies. There we are, eight LEDs, and they should all fall flat. Again, we can uh, we can bend the legs a little bit on the uh, other side of the board, which helps hold them in place. I'm actually going to use my bit of blue magic and just roll it up to them and hold it in place. Have a look down the, the line and make sure they all line up because they do wobble a little. They do have flat bases, but you really this is the one thing that people will notice if these aren't in a perfectly straight line. Not that it matters too much. And there you go. So let's make a start. As I said, these, these components are slightly more heat sensitive than the resistors, but really you don't have to panic. Same again. You've got about 10 seconds in total. Look at the data sheets, it'll say 10 seconds at 220 centigrade. 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000. There you go, 4 or 5 seconds. So we're way, way inside the time limit before we even think about causing any damage to them. not worried about that at the moment. Finally, on the LEDs, the last two ones. Green one at the bottom, red one at the top, and again, these are even harder to work out where the flat is, so we know that the short leg is the flat. Goes in. Quite tight. Not too bad. Again, I'll just use a bit of the blue stuff to hold it in place. I'm not even going to bother using the uh, bending the legs out. And 
and we'll just solder these up. Now these are quite close together so we do want to check that these pads, that the solder hasn't bridged over between the two pads. And I don't think it has in this case, there's a little bit of flux there which isn't going to affect anything. But that all looks, looks okay to me. So we're going back. Now, beginning to take shape, we've uh, one last thing to solder on, which is our connector. Here's the connector. It goes on, like that. It can wobble about, so once again, a little blue helper here. That's going to help us to get, get ourselves sorted. Now, Again, with these being quite close together, you have to be careful that you don't short circuit two pins. But it's not very difficult to do. I'm going to solder one. I'm pushing down on the board just to make sure it goes through. And I'm going to stay a little bit of pressure on the board just to make sure. And there we go, I'm just looking. Yep, that looks fine. So we've done one. Now we can go down. Nothing else to solder. Board is uh, complete. We just have a, a quick look. Looks fine. Connectors in place, it's uh, sitting nicely down. The LEDs are all in a nice line, as are our resistors. Those switches we can uh, push. The underside, well, there's a few spots of uh, the resin flux, but we won't really worry about that. The connector looks okay. So, time to uh, connect it up and test it. OK, here we are. This is the board we've just soldered up and I've connected up to a Raspberry Pi and I've turned the Raspberry Pi on. I don't recommend that you connect it up to the Raspberry Pi whilst the Pi is turned on. I think you should switch off your Pi, connect it up, make sure your connector is fine, that there's no overlapping if the connector is off to one side or if it's forward or backward. Just make, make sure everything's fine and then turn your Raspberry Pi on. When you do turn your Pi on, these two little LEDs are going to be lit up. That's perfectly normal. Don't worry about that at all. We can then control these through our software, switch them on and off as we need to at a later date. So the first thing that we do, once we've finished soldering it and assembled it, we've switched it on. We're quite happy that our Raspberry Pi is booted. Um, I've got a keyboard just, just out of sight here. So I'm going to run the test program. Now the test program is part of the software that you download off the website. So first thing the test program does is it switches all the lights off. So we just make sure that all the lights are off. It says, says so on the screen. All LEDs should be off. Please check. I'm checking. All the LEDs are off. Press the enter key. And now they should all be on. Please check. Yes, they're all on. Blue LEDs are a little bit bright. That's uh, that's fine. That's that's acceptable. If, um, if you were feeling really, really keen, you could change the resistor values here. But... Uh, at the time when we designed it, we didn't know exactly which LEDs we'd be using. So some LEDs are brighter than others. We're just going to have to accept that for now. Press enter. And now we can test the buttons. So the buttons, there we go. One, one button controlling two lights, one button controlling two lights, one button controlling two, and one button controlling two. So that's, that's fine. We can press... I, I've got it on top of this, this little breadboard thing at the moment, so I can't... I can press that, I can press that, but I'm, I'm actually got to hold the underside of the board to press these. If you've 
got it flat on your desk then there shouldn't be any any problems at all so the buttons work there we go the lights work now we can uh, can run run some little little programs that's a simple little program that just sequences the LEDs doesn't do anything terribly clever with them but it's just a little demonstration of, of uh, what we can do with the LEDs that's fine the uh, the tux this is the uh, the pelican crossing simulator or as I like to call it the tux crossing simulator because tux is our penguin mascot and I think we'd rather have a penguin crossing the road than a pelican why did the penguin cross the road? Mm. so you could light up some pretty LEDs green traffic lights, a red man push the button green, orange, red then a green man comes on and then we can cross the road we're going to get about 10 seconds in the program, you can change the program, make it longer or shorter um, one, zero and then we go on to our flashing green man and flashing amber for the traffic and uh, again after six or seven seconds of this it's going to go back there, red man goes on and then our green traffic lights go on, so there's a very simple program just to, to play with a switch and play with the uh, with the LEDs uh, that's relatively easy and finally there's the original ladder program which is what this is all about so this is a, a little game that simulates climbing out of a well and we have a flashing light, we've got the, uh, the button we push the button and every time we push the button we climb up a little bit but if we are climbing when the light goes out then we fall back to the bottom again so we can only climb oh, I mistimed that, let's try again there we go and it does actually, the time that uh, it, it gives you is shorter and shorter the further towards the top you get I've got the top on that, I'm just going to try and light the very last one which is the, the little green one oh, there we go, back to the bottom again, missed that There we go. And we're ready to play again. So there you go, that's the uh, the Raspberry lad Ladder board. There's going to be a few more little programs. There's a little uh, Simon game, which is a memory game, and a reaction tester game. And you'll be able to download those and have a look at the programs and hopefully go on, change your programs, and then start to write your own programs. And uh, have some fun. There you go.